Hello everyone, it's Thursday, June 20th, and you're looking at a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket awaiting its 5.35 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. My name is Kate Tice. I'm a senior engineering manager here at SpaceX, and I'm joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Welcome to our live launch coverage of the Astra 1P mission on behalf of our customer, SES. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 62nd mission of 2024 and the 346th overall Falcon 9 mission to date. Now, as some of you may recall, SES was one of SpaceX's earliest customers and has been a key partner for us over the years. Astra 1P marks our 12th dedicated mission with SES, having first launched SES-8 in 2013, and most recently the third O3B Empower mission last year. But perhaps most notably, back in March of 2017, as you see here on your screen, we launched SES-10 on what was the first reflight of Falcon 9. I remember that webcast very well. It's still one of the most exciting missions I've hosted because it was the first time an orbital class rocket had ever flown twice. Now, just seven years later, reusing our boosters seems like the norm. SpaceX has reflown Falcon rockets 220 times, excuse me, 290 times, including four boosters that have completed 20 or more flights each. Today, we hope to add one more to our tally with the launch of Astra 1P. The Astra 1P satellite is a wide beam broadcasting satellite with 80 KU band transponders for broadcasters and content owners across large TV markets in Germany, Spain, and France. We'll have more to share about today's mission a bit later in the webcast. We're currently at T minus 11 minutes and 15 seconds. The vehicle is looking good and teams are not working any technical issues. Weather is also looking good. As you see there, it's a beautiful day with some clouds in the background. Um, however, we, it's something we will continue to monitor as there was a 40% uh, possibility of violating the launch criteria weather-wise. So continuing to monitor that. But for now, let's learn a bit more about the Falcon 9 supporting today's flight. Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket that is designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads to Earth orbit and beyond. It is the most flown U.S. launch vehicle ever, and it's currently the only orbital class rocket capable of reflight. The entire vehicle stands 229 feet tall, or about the height of a 21-story building. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, also referred to as the booster. Not only is the first stage the largest part of the rocket, but it's also the portion of the rocket that we attempt to land for future reuses. Today's booster will be flying for the ninth time, having previously supported Axiom-2, Axiom-3, CRS-30, Euclid, and four Starlink missions. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage accelerates through the Earth's atmosphere and into space using nine Merlin M1D engines. Together, these M1Ds deliver 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Upon separating from second stage about two and a half minutes into flight, it will return to Earth using a combination of those Merlin engines and four titanium grid fins located near the top of the booster, which will help guide the booster during its re-entry and landing. After stage separation, the booster will attempt to land on our drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which as you see there on your screen, is currently parked out in the Atlantic Ocean. Landing a booster is a bit like flying a pencil over the Empire State Building and trying to land it on a shoebox on the other side, in the middle of a windstorm. Now, turning our attention to stage two, it will continue to target uh, altitude, it will continue to its target altitude where it will deploy today's payload the Astra 1P satellite. The second stage sits above the first stage and has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine that ignites after the first stage separates. Falcon 9's first and second stages are connected by the black carbon fiber inner stage and that houses the MVAC nozzle and the system that decouples the two stages during stage separation. Located above the second stage is the payload fairing, which is the large barrel structure at the top of the rocket. And inside that is the inside that fairing is the Astra 1P payload. At 17 feet in diameter, the carbon composite fairing protects satellites on their way to orbit and are jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. 
those fairing halves you see there on your screen, uh, they are both flight proven, with one half flying for the sixth time and the other half flying for the seventh time. After separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth and will be recovered by our recovery team on board Bob, which is one of our recovery vessels. Bob is already at sea and ready to retrieve those fairings. Now that we're familiar with the vehicle, let's learn a bit more about today's telecommunications satellite. We're currently at T minus five minutes and 16 seconds. Falcon 9 is tracking no issues and the payload is healthy. The vehicle has been loading propellant since T minus 35 minutes and that will complete uh, at T minus two minutes. The range is ready to support and weather is still looking good. If for some reason we are unable to launch today, we have a backup window opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Are pressurizing for strong back retract. As we heard there, the strong back retraction is beginning, uh, sequence will begin shortly. We'll begin by opening the clamps that you see there on your screen just below the payload fairing. Following that, once the clamp arms are fully open, the strong back will begin to retract away, just a couple degrees away from the rocket. Strong back retract has started. We can see those clamp arms opening now. While we retract the TE just a couple degrees at this point, at T minus zero, the ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE away even further from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and as you can see, retracts away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. We sometimes refer to it as the strong back, and it does a lot of heavy lifting in the lead up to launch. We use the TE to roll out the rocket to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. It's also what we use to route the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and the payload until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the pad. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Stage one, Pogo. First stage is finishing up its lock load stage now. Stage one, lock load complete. And there we just heard the call out that that is now complete. We expect to hear that second stage uh, is lock, lock load is complete at T minus two minutes. The white clouds that we'll begin to see around the vehicle is the chilled gas, which is above the LOX tank, and we vent that overboard to maintain the vehicle pressure in the tank as needed. And when that vented oxygen comes out into the air, the humid Florida air condenses into clouds and water. We're standing by now for second stage uh, propellant loading completion. Stage two, locks load complete. And with that call out, Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with nearly 1 million pounds of propellants. Now at T minus 60 seconds, we'll hear the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Just inside T minus two seconds, we Ground light- Ground gas closeouts. Inside T minus two seconds, we light the M1D engines for liftoff. The Astro 1P satellite continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team still tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather still looking green, a beautiful day in fact, and the range is ready to support our T0 of 5.35 p.m. Eastern Time. Falcon 9 is in startup. At 
this point in time, Stage 1 and Stage 2 are beginning to pressurize for launch. Go for launch. And there we just heard our launch director give the final go for launch tonight. We're currently at T minus 35 seconds, and all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with the Astro 1P satellite. Let's listen in on the final moments of the launch countdown. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Attention. And lift off. Go SpaceX, go Astro 1P. Launch is coming. We're at T minus 30, or excuse me, T plus 33 seconds and counting. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying the Astro 1P satellite. After clearing the tower, we tilted or gimbaled the engines to initiate a roll Power and telemetry nominal. And you may notice that in the Stage 1 camera view, this enables the vehicle's antennas to stay in the best position for communicating with the ground. In just a few seconds, we're going to be throttling down the engines in preparation for max Q, which stands for the maximum aero, the moment of max, maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. And there we heard that call out. As Falcon 9 accelerates through the thicker lower atmosphere, that air density decreases. Falcon 9 passes max Q once the air density lowers faster than the increasing speed of the vehicle. You can keep your eye on the stage one telemetry there in the bottom left-hand side of your screen and keep an eye on those speed changes through ascent. Now the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to earth and, uh, and therefore get into orbit. In about 30 seconds, we're going to have uh, a num three events coming up uh, that will happen all in succession quite quickly, starting with main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and second engine start one, or SES-1. Not to be confused with today's customer, SES. As the name suggests, main engine cutoff is where we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Beautiful views coming from the Stage 1 booster. Coming up on Miko now. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. And there you heard and saw those events happening back to back. The next event we have coming up is fairing separation. We will attempt to retrieve, excuse me, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once again as they fall back to Earth, and we will do so with our recovery vessel, Bob. As a reminder, Astro 1P, our payload today, is a wide beam broadcasting satellite with 80 KU band transponders for broadcasters and content owners across large TV markets in Germany, Spain, and France. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we just heard confirmation of that fairing separation, and perhaps you caught a peek of it as well. Actually, you can see one of those fairing halves falling away in the background behind the MVAC engine there on the right-hand side of your screen. Nominal trajectory. Now the next event we have coming up around T plus six and a half minutes 
will be uh, the first stage entry burn that will be conducted by the booster, which is the left-hand side view on your screen. And that will be the first of two burns that the first stage will perform in order to land back on Earth. You can see the first stage is actually still very slowly, but a little bit gaining um, slight altitude. Looks like it might be peaking right now. The first stage continues to do so for several moments uh, after stage separation. And we can see there now that it is beginning to, uh, it has reached its apogee and will begin to see the altitude decrease, meaning it was beginning its return back to Earth. Everything continues to look nominal for the second stage on the right hand side of your screen. A gorgeous daylight view of planet Earth behind that MVAC engine. To start the entry burn, we will relight three M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes in order to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. The entry burn actually helps to reduce the heat generated from the friction of the atmosphere itself and reduces the aerodynamic forces that are acting on Falcon, which in turn helps maintain controlled flight and prepare for the landing burn. Less than a minute until that entry burn. Now during that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, as I said, but still obviously moving very fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through the exhaust gas of the Merlin engines, and that deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle. That's why some of the reused boosters have a little bit more color on them than the newer uh, ones that are still have a... Stage 1 FTS has saved. Than the newer Stage boosters. 1 entry burn startup. And there we can see on the left-hand side of your screen that entry burn has begun. We can see that speed really decelerating now on the left hand, in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Again, this is the first stage and is the first of two burns that it will execute in this entry landing burn maneuver. Shut down. There we can see and heard that entry burn has concluded. And we can see how those grid fins help steer the vehicle for a precise landing. Once again, we are targeting our drone ship, which is currently parked in the Atlantic Ocean. And the drone ship we're using today is just read the instructions. Less than a minute for landing of the first stage booster. Everything continues to look great for the second stage carrying the Astra 1P satellite. Right around the same time that we're performing that landing burn stage on the first stage, well, that call out tells us that the first stage is traveling near the speed of sound. Now, right around the same time as the landing burn, we're going to hear a call out for MVAC shutdown or SECO uh, second engine cutoff one. Stage two FTS has saved. Terminal guidance. Uh, it looks like we have a pretty clear view of the targeted landing area, so if you look closely, you might be able to see our drone ship come into view. Stage one landing burn. There we can see the drone ship in picture. Landing burn initiated. And back shut down. Landing like deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. An incredible view from two different angles. As you can see, Falcon 9 has landed once again, marking our 320th, su 320th successful landing of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. It's also the 250th time that we've recovered a booster on a drone ship.
pretty cool. Now, while all of that excitement was happening, we had also had great news on the second stage. We heard confirmation of SECO-1, and we also heard confirmation of good orbit. So that tells us that we've got nominal orbital insertion, excuse me, insertion. At this point, we're going to go into a coast phase, and it will last about 18 minutes. When we return, we'll have a handful of events, a handful of events happening, starting with second engine start two uh, and second engine cutoff two. And those events will be followed by a seven minute coast. And finally, payload deploy around uh, T plus 35 minutes, just before T plus 35 minutes, in fact. So stick around and enjoy some space tunes in the meanwhile. Thank <laughs> you. 